Please pray for Che Mogo and his family. Pray that they would be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ and that they would know God's presence forever. Many of you have prayed for Sister Gloria. She's a Catholic nun who ran an orphanage about 45 minutes from our town. We would bring medical care and visit her orphanage. We shared meals in her home. She also would bring her children to our hospital for care. So we were surprised when in 2017 she was kidnapped by jihadists. And I think we spoke about this back in 2018 when we were visiting, and many of you have been praying for her. In our country, and really in the whole northern part of Africa and around the world in the Middle East, there's a war going on. And in our country, we have both Al-Qaeda and IS, and they want to turn our country into an Islamic caliphate under Sharia law. So kidnapping for ransom is one of, the, one of the ways that they fund their operations. On average, uh, a hostage goes for about $3 million. Four, she, Sister Gloria was in captivity for four years and eight months, and she was later released when the Pope allegedly paid 1 million euros for her release. The day after she was released, they, she was flown to the Vatican to thank him. We were also very surprised to hear that one week after we came to the U.S. in May, three Italian Jehovah's Witnesses and their Togolese partner were kidnapped from our town. And they are still missing today and most certainly were kidnapped by jihadists. And then in June, our town's southern border checkpoint was attacked by jihadists and eight people were killed. And then just 10 days ago, there were six coordinated attacks represented by these yellow stars throughout our country, and a day later, the main military base uh, outside of the capital was attacked. Our government has had two coups in the last two years, and now has a military transitional government, and they have pushed the French out of the country. They are not having a good relationship with the United Nations force that's in our country, and they've invited Russian mercenaries to come help fight the jihadists. So we have the Russian paramilitary group Wagner in our country, which usually leads to a lot of destabilization. So as you can see, the security situation is not good and has been deteriorating over many years. In fact, last May, the entire missionary community from our town and our hospital were evacuated indefinitely, but our family and our teammate have remained. The question I want to ask is, what causes Christians to flee in the face of persecution? We flee because of a fear of man and what man can do to us. Now, in Scripture, sometimes Paul was led by the Holy Spirit to flee. But we should never flee out of fear. To address this fear, we also turn to God's Word. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus is sending the disciples off for the very first time by themselves. So he prepares them by telling them they will be persecuted. And he tells them not to fear. So we pick up in verse 26. Therefore, do not fear them. And by them, he refers to those who persecuted Jesus and those who will persecute them. For there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. I believe what Jesus is saying is that God will make all things known. He will reveal all things. And if God reveals all things, because he is a righteous judge, he will judge them accordingly. So we, ha we should not fear. We should be patient and trust God. God will avenge all wrong and punish all evil, and he will reward the righteous. In verse 27, he goes on to say, What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light. And what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim upon the rooftops. Jesus is saying, don't be afraid and intimidated by persecution. Proclaim God's truth freely and boldly, even shouting it from the rooftops. Verse 28, do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul. He's saying, don't fear man. Now to us and to most people, death is actually the worst outcome you can imagine. But Jesus is saying, that's all that man can do. Man can physically harm you, man can kill you. And I know that sounds bad, but remember how God cares for the grass, how God cares for the birds, how God cares for the flowers. No one can harm us apart from his will. Furthermore, he promised to always be with us 
and to never forsake us even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He will give us the grace and power to endure. Now, I don't want to minimize death and sadness that it brings those for, who are left behind. But as Paul encouraged the church, he said the dead in Christ will rise first and then we will rise with them. We will see our loved ones again. But dying is not a loss to the one who dies in Christ, but is a great gain. It is infinitely greater than winning a billion dollars in the mega millions <laughs> jackpot. I don't know if a winner has been announced yet. When we die, we enter into the presence of God forever. If we have placed our faith in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. Jesus goes on to say, but rather fear him, God, who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Only God has the power to cast a person into hell for eternal suffering and torment. So dying is not the issue. We'll, we will all die. The question is, where will we spend eternity? If you are a follower of Jesus, the only thing that you should fear is God. To fear anything else is wrong and sinful. In the Bible, we are commanded, do not fear, do not be afraid, fear not, and do not worry 116 times. And we are commanded to fear God 46 times. Jesus continues in verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? He's back to birds again. And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. A nameless unknown sparrow in an empty field will not die apart from God's sovereign will. The infinite, all-powerful creator and sustainer of the universe that Pastor Dave talked about and showed pictures of his creation last week. He knows how many heads, how many hairs are on our heads. That means when we take a shower and we see three of them, or maybe more, at the bottom of the shower, God knows how many fell out. So don't fear, because we are more valuable to God than many sparrows. We alone bear his image. Verse 32, therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my father is in heaven. Boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in love before people who hate you, who hate God, who hate righteousness, and who even want to kill you. And Jesus will claim you as his child before his father in heaven. This is our family, my beautiful wife, Julie, and our three great kids. Serving in Mali has definitely been a team effort. And we have consciously and intentionally decided to fear God and not to fear man. We believe that the most dangerous place is actually in the center of God's will because the Bible promised persecution and suffering to those who follow him, who name the name of Jesus, and those, for those who seek righteousness. It is the safest place in the eternal sense Although we don't want to be kidnapped, we don't flee from the risk of it either. We just want God's will to be done. However, as a husband and father, I will do whatever it takes to protect my family. I believe that's my God-given right. But please pray that we would trust God and the promises of his word and faithfully endure whatever persecution that he has planned for us. It's easy to talk about it now, but we just pray that we would be able to endure in that time and remain faithful. So to boldly proclaim Christ from the rooftops and to shine as his light, we have planned a large and much, much needed expansion at the hospital. This is the current hospital uh, layout now. It's comprised of, an, the, the new project is comprised of an entry building and a large children's hospital with additional services. And my wife and I will be in the lobby if you're interested in learning more. But I'd like to close with this last story about Salimata. She was born with what's called esophageal atresia. It's when the, it's a genetic malformation where the esophagus, the lower part of it, is actually connected to the airway, to the trachea, and the top part ends in a blind pouch. So miraculously, Salimata was able to survive two weeks with this condition. Normally, children die if they're not treated early because they don't get nutrition, and also when they try to feed, it goes into the lungs and they get pneumonia. 
So she went to another hospital and they tried to put a feeding tube in because she was malnourished. And they tried and tried and tried and couldn't pass it, but then it finally passed. But the problem is it passed into her airway and into her lungs. So when they gave a bolus of formula, it went into her lungs, you know, in a sense, drowning her. Um, so when they did an x-ray, they saw that the, the tube was in her chest rather than down in her stomach. So they sent her over to our hospital. Even though she was very malnourished, dehydrated, and had pneumonia, we didn't, it, was impossi- it would be impossible to give her time to strengthen her, treat the pneumonia before taking her to surgery because it would just get worse and worse. So we had to operate on her right away. And miraculously, she tolerated the surgery well and recovered. And by God's grace, her parents placed their faith in Jesus Christ. Two years later, her family came to visit us on Easter Sunday. And I just give praise and glory to God. She's even wearing an Easter hat. (laughs) Some of you have come this morning, and if we're honest with ourselves, we each have our own fears. If we're not in a, if we're in a good place right now and we're not in a situation of fear, later today we may be tempted to fear or later this week. I would just like to encourage you to meditate on one of the passages that we read today, Matthew 6, Psalm 23, or Matthew 10, and pray and ask God to give you the faith to trust God and in his promises and choose to fear God rather than to fear man or anything else and boldly proclaim Jesus wherever you are, in your neighborhoods, in your schools, in your places of work, and into the ends of the earth. May God bless and keep you. Thank you. Well, on on behalf of the chapel, and I'm sure on behalf of all of us, I just really want to thank Dr. Kim, uh, his family, not just for being with us and sharing with us this morning, but just for the years of faithful service, for how much that encourages and inspires us. Could we just show our appreciation one more time? And would you rise for our closing? Just remind you that uh, Dr. Kim and his family will be out at a table in the lobby. So if you'd like to find more about this building project that they're up to, or just find ways to connect with them in the days to come, um, please take a moment to stop by and speak with them on your way out. So we've been uh, given an awesome challenge today about putting our fears in their place and trusting God and walking forward. So let's just pray for that spirit on all of us as we leave today. Pray with me. Father, we confess that fear is a very real thing in our lives and sometimes causes us to to shrink back, to to close our mouth, to avoid confrontation, to, to do unwise things. Lord, we're so thankful for this challenge and for this walking example of following you in the face of fear. And God, we we confess our fear. We 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 repent of that and turn from that, Lord. And I pray that right now, Lord, you would fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit and that we would walk out these doors today, walking in confidence, in trust in you, realizing that you're so much bigger than any of our fears. Lord, as we do that, as we engage with our world, help us to represent Jesus really, really well. I pray for your blessing on us now and on Dr. Kim and his ministry in the days to come. And we ask this all in the name of our powerful Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you.